Hello everyone, um, I'm here today to do my wrap up for January 2022, uh, we're already in 2022, um, and yeah, um, it was overall a pretty good reading month I would say, given the circumstances, it was a lot better than November and December, I guess I'm just getting into the group of things, so that's always good. Um, but first I wanted to start with a DNF, and that's The Reckoning by John Grisham. Um, there was nothing particularly wrong with this book, it was just that, um, yeah, it, it's it's a murder mystery. There is, I read the first couple of chapters and it was about this man um, that one day woke up, took his gun and went to kill the reverend of the town and nobody knows why. Um, so I guess the rest of the book was about why he killed this reverend um and yeah it, there was nothing wrong with the book the like the premise was that of a of a typical murder mystery i guess i just i'm not into murder mysteries <laughs> that's the main point that i took from this um i could have finished it and i could have given him a like middle of the road review nothing special forget about it a few minutes after I finished so instead of doing that because I don't have that much time these days I decided to just DNF it instead um, but yeah it, it's not to say that it's a bad book or anything it's just not the kind of stuff I like to read um, the first book that I finished is uh, Wind, Sun and Stars by um, Antoine Saint-Exupéry which is also the author of um, A Little Prince and I really enjoyed this one um, Antoine Saint-Exupéry has a naivete and a child wonder about things that I really enjoy and also he's very poetic on his language um, and this book is um, an autobiography of his time um, as a pilot he worked for as a pilot for a while and he explains in this in this book the kind of job that he was doing and the thoughts that came to his mind while he was doing this job. Um, so yeah, I I enjoy really much this, I really enjoy this book. I think that he is a very good writer. Um, and it just, the books that he writes are the kind of books that leave you um, with hope of humanity without being overly sweet and um, unrealistic. He, he talks about some, bad stuff and he doesn't sugarcoat it but at the end of the day he highlights the good parts of people rather than the bad parts and that of course always makes makes me feel better um, without being unreal so yeah I recommend I would like to read more from Antoine Saint-Exupéry I think he's a very good writer the next book I finished is All Over Creation by Ruth Oseki and um, this was the last Ruth Oseki I have to read until she comes up with something else um, and I really enjoy her books. She has, a, she has a writing style that always makes me want to keep reading and makes me captivated in the book which I really appreciate. Um, this one in particular focuses on GMOs mostly so we follow several people we follow um, <clears throat> this old man that has a farm in Idaho that grows potatoes and he has um, a seed bank that he's trying to um, give to people or like sell to people and encourage them to keep the seeds and start their own seed banks um, whilst around him there are a lot of farmers that are using GMOs which you cannot keep the seeds of GMOs because they are copyrighted which to me is crazy how do you copyright a living thing but that's that's a discussion and <laughs> not for now um, but yeah so that's the setup is in this farm with this old man and then we have also um, other things going on. So we have the family dynamics of this old man's family. He has a daughter that uh, ran away when she was 14 and she finally comes back to the farm. There is this 
there is the daughter of the neighbors of this man that um, her parents died so she's um, sort of the second daughter of this man and she has been taking care of him and um, trying to also contact his real daughter and then there is this um, collective of activists that are traveling throughout the US um, to protest against GMOs and when they hear about this bank seed when they hear about this seed bank they want to go and meet the man that started it and yeah and get a little bit more knowledge on the topic um, so we have the interactions of all these different peoples with the farm, with the people in the town, with the GMOs and the debate on that and what are the consequences from all of the points of view which I thought it was really interesting and in, although the general gist of the book is that we should try to avoid GMOs uh, it's not a black and white thing, it also shows for example the fact that the farmers in Idaho that decide to go for GMOs basically is because they are just not making enough money with with the normal potatoes um, and they they need to try something new so it even though overall it kind of shows that GMOs will not be the best it also um, acknowledges that there are advantages to it um, so yeah, I, I really enjoyed this one. I think that the topics that it discusses are great. I think the language is very captivating, the character development is there. Um, the only thing that I don't like about this book, and I think about all of the Rutozeki's books, is the ending. I think the endings are really weak, are very predictable, are very cliché, are very... Yeah, not sweet, but they're, they're, they are not very innovative. Um, so yeah, that's the only thing I, I would say against it. The next book I have to discuss is Futures of Black Radicalism and this is a collection of essays by different people but essentially they are discussing the evolution of the black movement and the way in which black people have been oppressed but also the ways in which black people have been trying to fight that system um, and I enjoy some of these essays more than others of course I particularly enjoy the fact that it's not only US based there are, uh, there are authors that talk about the US but there are also authors that talk about Britain which I appreciate because I find that too often the discussion about racism is focused in the US as if there was nothing else and there was no racism anywhere else or the racism in the US was the same as everywhere else and that's not the case. I mean in Europe we do have a lot of racism but it's very different from the one in the US. Um, I think that here it's more subtle in the way it's done, like it's not so much the police actively shooting down black people um, but there is slight things like if there is a white and a black candidate for a job that are equally qualified the white one will get the job and um, black people always have a harder time finding good jobs, finding good housing, finding um, these kind of resources and there is also, I mean, polit brutality and things like that are still a thing but it's a lot less than the US. I think the more prevalent problem here it's, it's that more subtle racism. Um, so yeah, I appreciated that the book included that. Um, however, I will say that for most essays the the language is very very academic and very dense and hard to follow um, so first of all if you want to go into this you have to have knowledge uh, pre-reading this I don't think I got everything because I don't think I had the knowledge but also you have to be ready to read very academic texts um, it's not it's not an easy book to read not only for the for the topics that it covers but also because of the tone and the explanations that it goes through um, so yeah overall this one was okay um, I think it's valuable but I don't think that 
I personally have the capability to get out of it all that it has to offer. The next book I finished is Intimacies by Katie Kitamura and I have a full review of this book but basically um, this is um, the story of a translator that moves to The Hague to work in the International Criminal Court um, and it has discussions on language, it has discussions on um, the layers that translation adds, it has uh, also discussions on the work of the criminal court, uh, which people get judged there and what they do about it. Um, the, it also has uh, descriptions of The Hague as a city, which I appreciated because I, that's where I live. Um, and I recognize all the places that were discussed. Um, but overall, I think that this, this book lacked direction. Uh, there were a lot of small plots that never got anywhere. Um, there was developments that never got anywhere and there was character development that was not actually shown. It was more like told us that she changed, but we didn't see it with her actions. So yeah, overall it was a little bit of a blow for me. Um, but yeah, if you want to know more, you can go to my full review. And then the last book that I finished is The Nomads, My Brothers Go Out to Drink from the Big Dipper. I think that's how it's called. Um, by Abdurrahman Waberi. Again, I might have butchered that. But this is a poetry collection uh, from a man that... Um, he's from Djibouti. And that's kind of why I read this. Because even though I'm not participating in Invisible Cities anymore, I still want to read from places that I have never read before. And um, Loren from Loren, uh, from Reading with Macard and I were talking the other day, and I realized that I have finished several letters of the alphabet. So, for example, I've read all of the countries that start with I or with Z, but um, Djibouti was a place that I was missing to finalize D. So I decided to read something from Djibouti and this was what uh, I found and it's actually quite nice. Uh, it has a lot of descriptions of nature, it also has some poems about the effects of colonialism and the uh, political situation in Djibouti uh, and I really enjoy it. I'm not one for poetry normally so I don't think I got out of this what someone that is into poetry can get. Um, but as a book that I read, I enjoyed it. I I did learn some things about Djibouti, and yeah, I I think it's it's a good book. So if you like poetry, you might like it too. Um. So yeah, those are all the books that I read in January. Let me know if you have read any of these or if you have thoughts about any of them. And until next video, bye.